tennis balls are an embarrassment. In the decades since our society's shift towards embracing environmentalism and saving the planet, tennis balls during this period have remained entirely unchanged, almost as a reminder to mankind what the visual definition of wasteful looks like. Starting from its laborious and resource-intensive production, to its inherently minute lifespan, and ending with the massive environmental and centuries-long impact one single tennis ball leaves on this planet's lands and oceans, many wonder how it's possible no better solution exists to better sustain one of the world's most popular sports. Truth is, solutions do currently exist, but hardly anyone knows or cares. Just how blind have we been to the decades-long ecological issues posed by tennis balls? And what exactly can we do to make a change for our planet? If you're a tennis fan, you know the drill. You buy a can of tennis balls, hit with them for a session or two, and then unceremoniously chuck them into the trash, with no regard as to what they've been through during production, where they'll go after the garbage is hauled away, or what has been happening during each impact the ball has had with your racket. To visualize, an estimated 1.2 billion people play or watch tennis regularly, resulting in an estimated production of 325 million tennis balls every single year, enough to fill the Empire State Building up to the 62nd floor. But what exactly is a tennis ball? Well, cut into one, and you'll see that it's composed of two main parts, a rubber core and woven felt covering, fused together, processed, and pressurized to the point of ensuring consistent bounces every time a new can is opened. Of course, with such stringent quality measures in place, certain environmental allowances are taken. Not only is the current practice of mass rubber harvesting widely known to threaten protected forests and endangered species, but the outside felt is composed of wool and nylon, a petroleum-based plastic. As the balls must remain highly pressurized until play begins, they're sold in thick plastic canisters holding a maximum of three to four balls, produced solely using virgin or non-recycled plastic, as the recyclable kind leaks pressure due to microscopic holes. To wrap up the manufacturing process, the supply chain can take a ball 50,000 miles and across 11 different countries from start to finish, a life cycle which generates 1.2 pounds of carbon emissions for every tennis ball produced. Now, of course, what other choice do we really have? So we buy the cans en masse and pop them open to begin play. But how much use do we really derive from the balls relative to their incredibly resource-intensive production? In short, not much. Stretching their lifespan, frugal players can typically get three to four sessions of optimal play out of a canister of tennis balls, though serious players will use new balls every single match. In fact, professional tennis rules require six new balls every seven to nine service games, meaning that a Grand Slam tournament like Wimbledon will open and then discard roughly 54,000 tennis balls in just two weeks, which not including the cans equates to almost three and a half tons of landfill-bound rubber and plastic for just one of the hundreds of pro tennis tournaments held annually. Now, I know what you're thinking. Surely, many of these tennis balls are recycled in some way. And I assure you, they surely are not. In pursuit of quality, tennis balls are inherently designed to be non-biodegradable, single-use, disposable products that are impossible to recycle or redeploy under any conventional means due to the industry-grade adhesive used in manufacturing. So, in essence, a tennis ball's life truly begins when it makes its way to your local landfill, where it will sit and decay for an estimated 400 years into methane-producing, near-non-decomposable rubber waste, having emitted a potent greenhouse gas with a warming potential more than 28 times that of carbon dioxide. Now, if this all sounds like doom and gloom, let me at least reassure you, it gets worse. The oceans, home to nearly 50% of humanity's primary source of food and producer of half the world's oxygen. Despite being vital to our livelihoods, a significant amount of plastic haphazardly ends up in our oceans every year polluting our waterways. While bad enough, the greater cause for concern has been the staggering rise of microplastics present in the waterways. Invisible, non-degradable pieces broken off of larger plastics that are easily confused for food and consumed by plankton and smaller fish species, who are then consumed en masse by larger fish to eventually be eaten by humans, who each ingest an estimated 74,000 to 121,000 microplastic particles every year. But not all plastics are identical, of course, with some shown to break down into microplastics far more willingly than others. Major culprits include synthetic clothing fabric whose microfibers escape into the wash, car tires whose plastic gets worn down and escape as plastic dust while driving, and, perhaps unsurprisingly, tennis balls. Their fuzzy outer layer is made from loose strands of polyethylene terephthalate, or PET, the same material that's used to make water bottles, an eventual microplastic fiber shredded away from a tennis ball after every single strike with a tennis racket. 
finding its way into the air we breathe and carried by wind to our local waterways. Now, while disheartening to learn that the centerpiece of our sport carries such a negative environmental impact throughout every aspect of its lifespan, there are solutions that could drastically reduce the ball's footprint if implemented. And better yet, there's a way for you to massively help mitigate the ill effects of this very issue today. Firstly, similar to plastic soda and water bottles, empty tennis cans and their caps are in fact fully recyclable, so all players are encouraged at the very minimum to separate their trash when finished. But what about the tennis ball? Are there ways to make it better and or dispose of it in a far more sustainable manner? Yes, and yes. In 2019, Wilson unveiled their new line of tennis balls designed with sustainability in mind the Trinity line, designed with a new elastomer core that keeps tennis balls fresh four times as long without the need for any type of pressurization, meaning that there's no need for any type of plastic tubing either. Though many serious tennis players scoff at the idea of non-pressurized balls, such as those sold in bargain bags at sports stores, the Wilson Trinity line has received rave reviews since its release, even debuting at a professional WTA event in 2019. Taking the sustainable tennis ball idea a step further, Renewable, a Netherlands-based startup, have invented the world's first fully recyclable tennis ball made from recycled tennis balls. Having developed a technique to separate a regular-use tennis ball's felt from its core, they collect discarded balls throughout the country, recycle the used plastic-based felt elsewhere, and re-employ the black rubber into a brand new Renewable, now instead using 100% organic wool and cotton as its outer felt. The best part? No microplastics, ensuring cleaner air and oceans. Finally, though designed to be as non-recyclable as possible, organizations as mentioned have developed processes in recent years to separate tennis ball layers and reuse their components. The biggest player in this field has been shown to be Recycle Balls, an American-based nonprofit who, in collaboration with Wilson Sports, have thus far collected tens of thousands of landfill-bound tennis balls from tennis facilities throughout the country, and repurposed their insides into materials needed for tennis court construction, recycled clothing, even equestrian arena footing. Proving that afterlife possibilities do in fact exist for the once impenetrable product if initiative is taken. With all of this said, it's obvious that current mitigation and alternative efforts to seriously control tennis ball waste and pollution remains a far off prospect in its current implementation. The only true solution is for large manufacturers to take responsibility for their product's environmental cost and work together to develop standard guidelines for sustainable tennis ball manufacturing, use, and disposal. While that remains to be seen, there actually is a way you, sitting behind that screen, can help offset some of the damage caused by tennis balls and numerous other environmental pollutants right now. So a big, big thank you to CuriosityStream for donating their sponsor time so I can instead tell you about something near and dear to my heart, Team Seas. Team Seas is a massive global campaign attempting to raise $30 million to remove 30 million pounds of plastic and trash from our oceans, rivers, and beaches. By partnering up with Ocean Conservancy and the Ocean Cleanup, every single dollar we raise will go directly towards removing one pound of trash from our waterways. So every donation, big or small, will make a huge difference. As mentioned earlier, oceans and rivers serve as home to much of the life on Earth, produce much of the oxygen we breathe, and remain one of the major areas of our environment that we can still make a huge difference in saving today. Yes, today. Team Seas is sending professional cleaning crews to beautify our shorelines, deploying trash-eating robots to suck up garbage found on our planet's most vulnerable rivers, and dispatching teams deep into oceans to remove the copious amounts of unsafe fishing gear left abandoned at sea. Head to teamseas.org today where you can make a donation and track the team's overall progress. And thank you again to CuriosityStream for generously donating the sponsor time. Sustainable tennis balls may be years away, but together we can make an environmental difference today.